Taurus, and welcome to your September 2022 reading. We're going to look into the sun, moon, and rising signs of the Taurus Collective. This is a general reading and will not resonate with every single person. You're going to need a pen and a piece of paper because there's a lot of information in this video. You're going to want to come back to this video multiple times. If it's not resonating at this moment, it's possible that it will throughout the retrograde energy that we're about to do and um, the whole energies of September and even further on because we're going to talk about more of that. Um, these energies can be reversed, so cross-watchers, you can assign the roles as you please. Uh, there, it's also interchangeable in a lot of places. You just kind of see what's got to see what resonates with you and leave everything else behind. If this reading does not resonate with you, you can stick around. There may be something in it you need to hear. If you're brought to this channel and it's reading, there's probably something in it for you. Um, also, you can get a personal reading from me. It's easier for me to do personal readings than it is for me to get 12 videos out. So if you're needing me, and I always make... Uh, priority for personal readings as well. Uh, I generally get a lot of personal readings during the retrogrades, so if you're wanting that, you're probably going to need to reach out pretty quickly. Um, at the end of this video, there will be suggested videos for you, and if you like this reading or entertain in some way, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to move right into the reading and talk about some planetary movements that are really kind of important that I have, I'm feeling like are really important. I'm not an astrologer, so the last video that I did for you, the actual energy reading was correct. It was the um, astrology that wasn't. That's why I pulled that video down. So if you're wondering why, because I'm not really an astrologist, but I did double check my astrology this time and pulled some themes as well, which will help. Uh, and, um, and I got a lot more information, which will help too. Okay, so we are in the shadow period of Mercury retrograde in two days. Mercury retrograde is going to actually become in full force. So it's going to turn around on the September 10th to go. It's not really going retrograde. It's just a feeling, okay? So um, it's a feeling. Of, it happens every three months or so. Anyway, September 10th through October 1st. The first week will be pretty strong. The second week will be uh, a bit of a reprieve. And then the third week will be... Um, Pretty, uh, I think there's two weeks in between that are reprieve, and then that last week is like pretty full on. And then uh, the closer we get to the 17th, we'll be out of the energy. The retrograde is in Libra, and after the retrograde, it will go to Virgo. Libra is a very balancing energy. Um, it balances relationships, finances. It, it seeks harmony in things. And um, because of that, it is in your sixth house, which is the work and it, your the work you do, your health, and how you feel your duties are in life, what your duties are. And that is circling around the relationship and the relationship that is imbalanced. So um, that, okay, so then we have a new moon in Libra at the end of the month, which is also a solar eclipse as well. So you have those energies. Then we have Uranus, which is in retrograde, started August 24th going to be there until January 22nd, so all through the holidays in your sign of Taurus, which will be in your first house, and we'll talk about that in a second. The retrograde is not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned when it goes direct, because if you don't deal with the things during the retrograde, then when it goes direct, expect a band-aid to be ripped off, an unpredictability, unexpected events happening. So this is like when when you so all through the retrograde you might be dealing with us uh, well it's telling i'll tell you right here uh, the way people see you and how people see you and um and there's guilt around this somewhere so there there might be some things in relationships that you um you maybe feel still guilty about and you're wondering if people still see you in that way uh so and now uranus is going to be retrograde all through the holidays so you're going to have plenty of opportunities to see what's going on, where you're feeling like you still harbor some guilt around situations. And uh, it will be retrograded until January 22nd. So let's see. Oh, so when it's in retrograde, it's very tempered. And it's about your internal transformations and the way you like what you can resolve within yourself. Taurus also is about finances and relationships as well. So you're going to see things, maybe you're feeling guilty about things you didn't actually do in your finances. Maybe you're going to feel guilty about things that in your relationships. And how do people see me related to that? The um, last bit of that is Mars. And Mars is in, it's not in retrograde, but it's going to be in Gemini for a really long time. And Gemini is a very communicative sign. 
and uh, Mars is very fiery. So you might be wanting to have these fiery bickery conversations. Don't do it. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't do it. And that will be in your second house, which has to do with your ass, your assets, your finances, um, and the things that you act, that you value. There's a lot of regret around that. So we have guilt, re regret, and relationships that are the big themes that you're going to be dealing with. Now, Mars is going to go retrograde October 30th through January 12th. That's all through Halloween and all through the holidays. When it goes retrograde, it's going to slow down. And then you're going to understand, you're going to be able to understand fact from fiction. So this is when secrets come out, right? This is when uh, there were rumors and then the rumors start to show that, you know, what was true and what wasn't true. And so that is what's happening in your sign. Thank you for waiting for this video. I had a migraine yesterday. Um, I still have a little bit of a headache, but I didn't want you to wait too long. And I was reading for someone earlier, so I realized that I can do it. So I was like, all right, I will do it. So um, I will get this out because I know you're waiting for it. And all the other signs are out already. So looking at the cards, I'm not going to put them up because it's going to make this video a lot quicker if I don't. So I'll just tell you what I see. Um, so there's some sort of place where you have contemplated and meditated and you're ready to uh, relax the energy around it, some sort of transformation that you had. Uh, could have been things you were arguing about or it could be about many people. Lots of conversations with many people. Um, it could be uh, in the work you do or some sort of uh, short-term experience that you're dealing with right now. Uh, also, um, there is a feeling of lack of progress and procrastination and because of that you want to move forward in like proposing something or um, talking about something or could be giving your cup of love to someone but in in the form of a knight so it's not necessarily like the big forms but it is being more idealistic though and following your heart okay what is hidden that we can't see in taurus's energy What do we need to know that we can't see? And I may only be able to do one video today. We'll see. Okay, so there's lack of communication somewhere that is really needed for some mental clarity and um, you're, you're wanting to have it. It's just, it's not there for some reason. And that's because it is circling around this card of judgment there's some self-doubt on one of the sides of the parties that are going to be talking. Maybe the inner critic is coming in or maybe somebody's ignoring someone's call. So you're not able to get to that person. Um, there's, there's anxiety around it. Uh, there is some loneliness around this and it feels like the two lovers aren't coming together for some reason. So misalignment in the lover or you don't have a choice about the matter. Um, all right, let's find out what the strength and the obstacles are. And any all signs readings I do, make sure that you listen to those because those are easier for me to get out and that they're the main energy that we're all dealing with. This is kind of just looking through the eyes of Taurus. And I know you like your individual readings, but uh, sometimes it's just easier for me to do that. Okay. The obstacle is that there's no communication. Somebody's being very protective over themselves and you really want to hear the truth. The strength is because of this unhappiness um, that there's been some emotional control in this area and balance. Eventually, you will get what you want. The cups will be overflowing. So let me find out what you got to do to get those cups overflowing, okay? That's the hidden like obstacles, or not the hidden, but you know, the obstacles and the strengths. So how can we get this cup overflowing for Taurus? How can we get all this love in for them? All right, Taurus. Okay, just because somebody left you out in the cold doesn't mean that you have to be um, impulsive or overbearing or impossible expectations. Actually, that shows your toxic, toxic side and you don't want to do that, okay? Um, look at your feelings of guilt around this situation, the feelings of um, loss and grief. That'll help you be accepting and move on and find peace. So we got to look at this and this, right? The regret and the guilt in those areas are going to be strong for you. Um, also, uh, withdrawing a little bit from this person and not being so needy, I guess would be the word. 
uh, withdraw and that might help, okay? So let me see what else we can do. The more abundant you look to them, the more this love relationship is going to want to come together. And that's how you're going to get your your um, love your cups overflowing. So um, the, the more you are happy, okay, it attracts the one that you're not attracting at the moment, which will give you your cups overflowing, okay? So sometimes being attractive is is being attractive within yourself. There is an energy that kind of like rever reverberates off. Sorry, I got a headache. Uh, reverberates off of you. And then that brings that can bring someone closer. Okay, let me grab these. Okay. Um, so what is the outcome if Taurus can pull back? Not be so needy, not be so, or somebody in the relationship doesn't necessarily be, need to be you. It could be somebody in the relationship needs to pull back. So whoever's saying, please stop, the other person needs to stop. Okay? It's not about trying to prove your love to them. They know. Okay? It's about respecting them. So the moon is saying that right now there's a lot of, ambiguity, uh, muddiness in the relationship. Uh, and it doesn't, it's not moving the relationship forward because of it. it's really causing problems. Um, there's a lot of fear that needs to be released, a lot of repressed emotions, kind of some inner confusion as well. And that is, it's messing with the foundation of the relationship. Uh, and it could go a lot better if you, if you would do this. So it feels like there's a lack of support, then there's a lot of conflict, and then, and then there's like some change that happens. It transcends. So, and then that will give you your opportunity that you're looking for. Okay, so here, here, I'll show you. I know I said I wasn't gonna show you, but there you go. There's the cards that explain that. Okay, you're, so the end, end result is the opportunity. It's the new beginning, abundance, right? in what you're looking for, but you sometimes have to sift through the crap to order to get there. It's not always just as easy as, you know. Um, somebody has short-term thinking. Um, it's time to lay that to rest, but um, they can't do it if they don't feel like you guys are working together. Okay. So uh, let's see what else we can get for you. Um, as it does feel a little bit like love. And so I can get Aries out as well. I'm going to need to shorten, or not shorten, stop this reading so I can get this out because I'm going to have to go lay down. Okay. Okay. This is new. This is not new love. It is about you giving, uh, giving space uh, because of the rejection. The rejection is the, um, the whatchamacallit, the warning. Okay, if you feel rejected, it's your warning to create space. And then you create space, and then the, it comes back around. Okay, so um, I can pull what they're saying, if that will help you as well. And oh, I've been pulling crystals for everybody too. So, and I'm not going to put the crystal in the description box down below because I just don't um, have the time to do that. But uh, if you would just go to any of those links down below, like the Amazon links, then you can buy the crystal, search the crystal, and then buy it, and I'll still get credit. Okay, so somebody's saying, I don't want to know. I want to close my eyes on this. But I, because there's things that I don't want, and there's sometimes we don't share the same values. And they know that you don't feel the same, but they have trouble with intimacy. And um, every time that they feel like they can't be intimate in this way because they can't be vulnerable, then they're not as drawn to you and they feel they're not as attracted to you or vice versa, Taurus. I mean, roles can be interchangeable. So uh, so just kind of know that. I think the best thing in this course of action would be to create space uh, in a loving way, in a mature way. Just be, you know, be cool about it. Be like, okay, look, um, this isn't working, so let's just create some space and let's reconvene after the retrograde. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> 
because I don't, I mean, during the retrograde could be a good time because it is reuniting, reconnecting, re-love, re-everything. So, I don't know. It's something to think about. You can say, let's reconvene in 24 hours. Let's reconvene next week. Let's, you know, whatever. But be more mature about it. And that will attract a person or vice versa. If they're more mature about it, it will attract you. I don't know how that works out for you. Okay, so I don't even know this crystal, but go find it. It's called Release Your Emotional Baggage. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Aragonite. I'll just put it right there so you can see. And go ahead and write that down and search it up. All right, Taurus, if you like this reading or entertain this way, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and on the screen are some suggested videos, and I will see you soon. Bye.